Hey, it's one plucky pixel here and welcome back to another creative design tutorial. In today's video, we will cover some of the basics on text management within Adobe InDesign. So starting things off, we do have a pretty simple eight and a half by 11 page over here. And I do want to create the mockup of a magazine cover. In this case, I do have to add the title first. All I have to do is select the type tool over here. And upon clicking it, I do have to define my bounding box. This is the area that the type will sit within. So as you can see, as I click and drag, I can define that bounding box. From here, while my cursor is active, simply type in your text. In this case, I'll call this fall fashion. And if I utilize command A or control A, I can then select all of my text. Now up here, we do have most of our text parameters. For example, we have the font name, font weight, font size, the letting or line spacing. We do have various types of casing and text formatting here as well. We have kerning, tracking. We can shift the baseline of an individual character or letter form. We can also horizontally or vertically distort text. We can skew it. We can give it a fill and also a stroke. Of course, we do have other alignment tools over here as well, like left align, center, right align, justify, and others as well. In this case, what I wanna do is change this text. So once more selecting all of it, I can increase my type size using the up arrow or decrease it. I can also add in my own value. Let's do 100 points. Now in this case, we can see that the text is actually too large for our bounding box. To correct this, this is fairly simple. Just utilize the regular selection tool, right click the bounding box, select fitting, and then select fit frame to content. Of course, if you do not want hyphenation, you can also change this. So while the bounding box is active, simply go to window, type in tables, and then select paragraph. From here, we can then disable hyphenate. In this case, the word is actually too long for my bounding box. So all I have to do is change the size of the bounding box. I can just click and drag an edge like this. Conversely, if I hold Alt, I can actually expand the bounding box evenly from each side. I'm also going to change my typeface. I'll go back to my type tool. And from here, I will select Futura. I can type it in like so. And let's do Futura Medium, just like that. Now, as it stands, there are several ways we can modify the text. For example, just going to click, Command A to select it all. If I want to change the letting, I can do so over here using the up and down arrows, or for faster results, I can hold Alt or Option on my keyboard and utilize the up and down arrow keys, just like that. Tightening the letting or opening it up. Additionally, I can also change the tracking, the spacing in between the letters and characters. In this case, I can do so like this. Notice how it goes off the page. I can also tighten the tracking if I would like to. And likewise, holding Option or Alt using the left and right directional keys, I can also do so. So of course, please feel free to utilize the keystrokes. That is a quicker method, but you can also utilize these parameters as well. Now, if you do want to modify the individual spacing between two letter forms or characters, you can also do so. In this case, I do have a little bit of extra space that I do want to get rid of, especially around the O over here. So for example, I can double click and while the cursor is active, I can hold Option or Alt and then use the left and right directional keys like this. I'm going to make a few other adjustments and then we'll be right back.
All right, this is looking good so far. Now, as a quick note, let's say I want to resize my text. Utilizing the regular selection tool, you cannot actually do so. For example, if I click and drag holding shift, all this does is change the size of my bounding box. Instead, what you want to utilize is the free transform tool over here, like so. And upon clicking and dragging the corners, holding shift, we can then scale our text, just like that. Right about here is good. Moving forward, I do want to add a smaller headline below this text. To do so, I'm just going to shrink my bounding box just a little bit. If I try to create a text box over here, we will have overlapping bounding boxes. So ensure that your bounding boxes are pretty neat and tidy without distorting your text. Right about there is good. Once more, utilizing the type tool. And zooming in, let's start it right about here. Let's call this 10 trends you won't want to miss. Now, notice this is all in lowercase. I actually want this in all caps. So once more, holding Command A or Control A, selecting all my text, and I can use the casing options available here. In this case, I want this to be all caps, just like that. Additionally, I can also change my font or typeface once more. Let's do Futura. And this time, we will do Futura Light, just like that. Once more, holding Alt or Option, and using the left and right directional keys to increase that tracking. Better yet, let me actually go a little bit thicker on this. Futura Medium should do the trick. Now, in this case, notice how these text boxes are actually aligned, however the letters are off. Natively, most letters or characters in a typeface do have additional padding. In this case, we do have to correct this. One way we can do this is to utilize the rulers. So, by clicking and dragging from my ruler, I can actually create a guideline. Just like that. Right about there. Of course, I can also zoom in and correct this further if need be. Just clicking and holding to drag it in place. And from here, I can then realign my text, just like that. I'm gonna actually align it to the stroke of the letter forms. In this case, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking like so far. However, I do wanna make a few adjustments. Of course, all I have to do is select my text box activate the type tool, and then in this case, I want to change my font or typeface to Ditto. Let's do Ditto Bold. Of course, utilizing the regular selection tool, I can then correct my bounding box, just like that. Likewise, utilizing the same tool, I can also reposition my original guides, like this, right about there, and same thing with my text. Now remember, if you do want to move things perfectly vertically or horizontally, always hold shift while moving any kind of object or piece of text within your document, just like that. Lastly, I do want to add a little bit of text to the right of fashion. In this case, I want the year 2025. Once more, selecting the type tool, creating my bounding box, and from here, 2025. Let's make some further adjustments. I'll select all my text, increase the font or typeface size, and this time let's do Futura Light, just like that. I can also open up my tracking using Alt or Option, left and right directionals. And from here, I actually want this to be vertical text. In this case, I utilize the free transform tool, not the regular selection tool. I'm going to click and drag as I hover near the corners. 
once more holding shift, I can create that perfect angle like this. Preferably, I would like the text oriented in this way. I can then move it into position. And once more, for better alignment, I can create my own guides. Once more, ensure that your rulers are active, and then simply click and drag as you see that blue line appear. Right about there. And one more down here as well. From here, I'm just going to use the regular selection tool. And to more easily lock this in place, what you can also do is create outlines from text. In this case, I no longer need the text to be an active text box. To do so while it is active, simply select Type, and then select Create Outlines. And from here, these are now individual vector shapes. From here, I then go back to the Free Transform tool. I'm going to click, drag, and hold Shift. And just like that, scaling it down and matching the cap height of the N, just like that. And here is the end result zoomed out. Now, if I would like to change the color of any of the text, it is very easy to do so. In this case, for example, let's select fall. Let's double click and select the word fall only. From here, we then go to our fill panel. And we do have some different default swatches over here as well. For example, I can select this red swatch. But if I wanted something custom, I can also do that as well. Once more, returning to fill. I can then select the drop down here and select new color swatch. Now, this is fall, of course, so let's go for more of an orange. Right about here is good. I can add this swatch to my library. And upon selecting done, we do have our text recolored. If we return to our fill panel, we also have it down here as well. Alternatively, I can add a stroke around a letter form. Let's select the word fashion. And in this case, let's remove the fill. We're going to go to our stroke. We then open our stroke menu. And let's just use black as the outline. And just like that, we do have our stroked letter forms here. Now, navigating back to the stroke panel over here, we cannot modify the width or appearance of the stroke. To do so, go to the right panel over here and select stroke. From here, we can then increase the weight of the stroke like this, decrease it, and we can also change the appearance of the corners, which in this case are known as joins. To see this more clearly, for example, with the round join, let me just increase the weight. We can see those joins modify with these different options. Personally, I actually did not want the stroke on these letter forms, but I wanted to do so for demonstration purposes. So let me just undo this. And there we are, back to the start. Overall, this is just a very basic guide on managing text within Adobe InDesign. But of course, we will be going into more detail on other features in the near future. Of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out in the comments section below, and I hope to see you in the next video. As always, thank you so much for watching.